Ain't that right? It's actually, in other words, you can't see and have a vision of what God's doing if you forget you're purged from your own sin. In other words, if you let condemnation come on your soul and overwhelm you and overtake you, it's like blinders. It's just like putting on a pair of, of super dark glasses. It, it just clouds your vision. You can't see nothing. Amen. Amen. That's why Apostle Paul said, I, I want you all sorrow to repentance, but, but I want to be careful that you're not swallowed up by sorrow. Amen. Because then he said, when I come, if you're all sorrowful, who is going to make me glad? I want somebody that's going to make me rejoice or at least rejoice with me. Amen. Amen. So he was, so then he said, I want to reaffirm uh, and commend my love toward y'all. Amen. So that he didn't want them to be swallowed up. Because, uh, and tonight uh, the Lord wants to, 1 John chapter 2, reaffirm his love toward his children now. So if you're a child of God, this message is for you. Amen. If you're a rebel, it's not for you. You don't have to listen. Amen. But if you're a child of God, this is for you. Say to his children, amen, that he still loves Jacob. Amen. Amen. After all the things that Jacob did to God, amen, God still loves Jacob. Amen. Amen. After everything Esau tried to do to get in God's grace, God still hated Esau. But of everything that Jacob did... (laughs) Amen. To, to mess up and to do this and that, God still said, I still love Jacob. And so I want to talk about tonight, First John chapter 2, verse number 12 through 14. God still loves Jacob. You see, you know, that, and that's one reason people don't understand what's going on over in the Middle East. They cannot believe that God's love is everlasting. But he talked about how he had loved Jacob with an everlasting love. You know, that God has purged them, judged them, cast them out, thrown them out of the land, yet his love still rests upon Jacob. He's not lost sight of Jacob. His mind is still on him. And, I know, and now his mind's on the church. But I'm still, his mind is still on Jacob. I, I'm talking about that Jacob that was way back from the loins of Abraham and come out of Isaac's loins. Amen. And see, and that's why people don't understand what God's doing in, in Israel. Because they can't believe that God still loves Jacob. Yet he does. But that's the same hope for the church. You know, if God doesn't still love Jacob, amen, he don't still love us. That's right. If God's love fails, then God don't love us. Amen. First John chapter 2 says, I have written, verse 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. But I want verse number 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Go to chapter 4. See, your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Amen. Not for your name's sake. Neither for my name's sake. Amen. But for his name's sake. Why? Because he has made a covenant. Amen. And, and then that's one thing. So you can't understand God's love unless you understand that God is a God of covenant. You know, God's love is not based on anything except for a covenant type of relationship. And we're just not used to that. We're a generation that based love on everything <laughs> except for covenant. And we're basing it on feelings, emotions, lust, whatever. But God's love is based upon a covenant relationship. And the strength of a covenant depends on who made the covenant. And so God being strong, even being the Almighty, who has everlasting arms, who is able to bear up his children, then the strength of his love is based upon his strength. In other words, it's not based upon our strength. It's based upon his ability, amen, to overcome all of our weakness and all of our inability and all of our shortcomings and to bring us up to the level he wants us. And that's why I said, I'm not doing it for your name. I'm doing it for my name. I want to show 
that I can take somebody that is filthy and I can cleanse them and I can purge them and with somebody that is unlovable and I can love them and I can lift them up and I can hold them and I can bear them up against all opposition and all force and power. And see, and that's covenant. That's God's love based upon covenant. It has nothing to do with what we do. Now, we have a responsibility to continue in his love. The Bible says that we can know the depth. Amen. And we can know the breadth. And we can grow in the height. And we can begin to understand. Now, that's based upon what we do in response to God's love. In other words, there's a depth to it that you'll never know unless you respond to it. It's just like a man with his wife or whatever with their children. Amen. Unless you respond to love, you'll never know the depths of love. And that's the way with God. He may still have his covenant mind toward you, but you'll never experience it until you respond to it. Amen. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You start responding to love, it just it gets things working. You start learning about it. You start enjoying it. You start resting in it. You know, the Bible says that God rests in his love. Amen. Zephaniah says he shall rest in his love. Now, you looking for rest? Amen. Anybody looking for a place to rest? Amen. Somebody cried out, a prophet cried out, where is the place of his rest? Where is his dwelling place? Where is the place of God's rest? Well, I'll tell you one place God rests. He rests in his love. Amen. And the Bible says if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us, cleanseth from all unrighteousness, from all sin. But that place of rest is in God's love. Amen. You, you ever rested in your own love? Haven't you ever rested in your own love? You're going to do a certain thing, sat down, thought about it, and thought, well, for love's sake. For love's sake. And, uh, and I'll just rest in the thing. I'm going to rest in my, my own love that's in my heart. Of course, we know God gives it. But I'm just saying, but the love God put, haven't you ever rested in it before? Amen, tempted to do this or tempted to do that. But did you say, for love's sake, I'll just rest. I won't do anything. I won't go to the right hand. I won't go to the left hand. I won't respond this way. I won't do that way. I'll just stop and rest. Anybody ever did that? You're resting in love, just like God rests in his love. Amen. So 1 John chapter 4 says, verse 7, this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Ephesians chapter 1. So what is love? Is it because you love God? Nah, he said, hey, if you think that is love, you are grossly mistaken in error. He said, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And that is love. It's the fact that God loves us. That is true love. Amen. That is the true love. And that is eternal life. Amen. And that is strength. And that is rest. And that is health. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. I just want to read a couple of scriptures here for a minute. I want to get into something. Verse 3. He first loved us. You know, it's, it's just like a child. Where does a child learn their love from? It comes from their parent first. Amen. That, that child don't know really how to love. I mean, you look at a baby. I mean, if you look on, on just what it contributes, it's the most selfish creature around. <laughs> it don't contribute nothing. I mean, it expects to be fed, to be changed, to be clothed, to do it, you know, in that aspect. Every once in a while, to contribute a smile, you know what I'm saying? But otherwise, it, it, really, it, it really don't know too much. And so it must learn from the parent, from the father and mother. And it, so it is with God's children. We really 
don't know of our own selves love. Amen. And Jesus made it plain, even he himself, he said, I learn from the Father. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. Amen. Amen. And so even here, in the, for love's sake, we have to learn it from the Father. See, in God's love is just not like human love. Ephesians chapter 1. I guess if there were any human love that would be closest to it would be the, a combination of the conjugal, which is the marriage, and the natural affection of a mother. The maternal love and the conjugal love together would be something like God's love. That's what it would be. Amen. He has tremendous care for his children, and yet he desires a, a deeply intimate relation with his children too. Amen. He desires both. Amen. He wants that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says this. Amen. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to read this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You believe that? Amen. You really believe that? Do you really believe that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ? In other words, every, bless that, every blessing that the eternal God has, that he has given it to you as you sit in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus, do you actually believe that? Amen. Do you believe? Ah. Do you actually believe God loves you? That's hard to swallow now. I look at some of you. Like I said, God don't love like I love. He don't love like you love. Amen. Some, amen. But, but God, do you actually believe it? Are you persuaded? You know, I, I tell you, if you were persuaded, you know, you watch a child that's very sure of their parents' love. That's the truth you will see a very, very contented, satisfied child Amen. if they're sure of their parents' love. Amen. They're content, they're sad. They, they rest in it. Amen. I mean, they rest in it. Amen. They don't doubt different things. They, don't do, they just rest in that love. It's a place of rest. I'm telling you, it's there. And he says, verse 4, According as he hath chosen us in here before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy... And without blame before him in love. In love. And you're not going to be without blame. You're not going to be holy except for by love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 5 again, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now turn with me to Romans 8. Amen. So it is nothing to do. You know, I, I, I'm going to say this. You know, we, we a lot of times just think Adam was created as a man, in which he was. But really, what does the Bible say Adam was? Adam was created as a son. The scriptures tracing back the genealogy say, who was the son of this, who was the son of who was the son of Enos, who was the son of Adam, who was the son of God. And so God's original intent in creation, he actually wanted son. And even that spirit was still there, in Genesis chapter 6, right about the time of the flood, it talks about the Son of God. Those who still retained that spirit, that image, because Romans talks about we are conformed to the image of his Son. And in, in Genesis chapter 6, there was men who were still, though it was getting less and less because they were becoming uh, uh, polluted with the heathenism, but there were still men who had the Spirit of God dwelling in them, who were still in the image of God, who were still being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And they were there, and that's what God always wanted. All right. 
And so his love is going to be based upon the father with his child. It's there. That's a, a main part of it. Why? We have a... I'm telling you, we have a hard time believing this. That's the truth. You're not kidding me. You may say, yeah, I know God loves me, but do you really love it? Do you really believe it? Are you really convinced of it? I mean, how strong do you believe it? Amen. I mean, I mean, are there times where you haven't went into his presence? Huh? Amen. If you ever have not went into his presence for some reason, you have doubted it. You have doubted that love of God. You don't know yet, not yet know that height, nor breadth. Amen. Nor the length, nor the depth of it. And you're not going to kid me. There ain't a person somewhere on their time, in their mind, said, I can't go into the fire. I can't go into his presence. I, I mean, I've did some things, but this is, there's no way. I can't on this. Why? It's because you doubt the love of God. Yes, you do. I've doubted it before. I did some things, matter of fact, when I was first saved, I thought what really broke my heart is because I thought I, I just couldn't fathom somebody loving me. <laughs> I knew, see, there's some people you got to try and convince of sin. You didn't have to try and convince me of sin. I, amen, I knew I was wretched. What if somebody had to convince me there was a way out of this thing. There was a way out of this mess. And it was hard to fathom that somebody could wipe all that clean. I mean, they could actually just wipe it out, just cleanse it and wash it away. Amen. And accept me. Boy, it broke my heart when I realized that God actually loved me like that. See, but, but what that faith did, it loved me come into his presence. It allowed me <clears throat> to enter in to Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. You know, God loves his children. But he did put, he stuffed no in the ark, though. We can't forget that now. Amen. We know he's going to destroy it, but we've got to remember, too, he did save Noah Amen. and his household now. Amen. He said his love, it wasn't many, but he did set his love upon a few. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm just saying God's mind towards his church, really what he wants to do, he wants to set his love on his people. And he wants his people to respond to his love. He really does. I, I mean, God is rooting things out and doing everything, and God is hostile with the wicked, and God is reproving his children. You know what I'm saying? But really, his desire is still, and always has been, he wants to shed his broader love, shed his love abroad, shed his love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's what he desires to do. See, but what frustrates him sometimes is because we don't respond. Amen. Amen. We limit. We stop it. Right when it's ready to reach out to us, we stop it at that point. Okay. Amen. The Bible talks about you come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. You don't need it when you're on the high. You know what I'm saying? That's not the time to come. It's the time to believe it when you're in the low. It's time to receive it when you need it. When you need it. And it was, I mean, that, that means when you fall short. I mean, that means when you have to have it. That means when you can't come and say, hey, Lord, I did all perfect and just right today. You don't have no need then. Amen. But it's when you got to come and say, Lord, <clears throat> I need help. Help, Lord. Amen. This poor man cried unto the Lord. The Lord heard his help. <clears throat> heard his prayer. Romans 8. I want to read something. Verse 28. On down. And we know <clears throat> that all things Work together for good to them that love God. Is everything working out good for you? You must love God, huh? <clears throat> to them who are the called according to his purpose. Purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Remember, he wants children. That he might be the firstborn among many, but he wants children. Amen. That's what God wants his children. I'm telling you, that's what he wants his children. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them also, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, our distress, our persecution, shall tribulation? Huh? How about distress? You ain't never had distress separate you from God's love? Had a trial? How about persecution? How about famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquered. How are you going to conquer people? Listen to what he says. Through how you love him? Nay, in all these things, nay, in all these things, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquered through him that what? That loved us. You, know, you better understand, you better believe. You know, you know the apostle John, I'm going to go back to it, said that he was assured or that he believed that God loved him. And I'm going to go back to that scripture. In other words, it, was, it wasn't just say, yeah, I know God loved me. It was, he was assured. He was assured of it. He believed it. it. It was like a doctrine to him. It was a doctrine of truth that was a, a basic strength in his life. That he was sure that God loved him. And the Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that nothing is going to separate me from what? God's, no, God's love. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. And he says, through this I will conquer. If I remember that he loves me first. Amen and foremost. Yeah. You're not going to go and love God and do much good to God. And God's going to look down and say, oh, you love me real nice. And I'm, I'm really happy with that. You're going to first acknowledge his great love. And then he's going to say, look at them. He knows my love. He values my love. And then God will put that love in you by the Holy Spirit. And then that love can be shed abroad. And the scripture says it'll be like a river of living water. But it's first. It's first. It's first. You say, well, why am I having a hard time loving God? Because you're not acknowledging his love. That's the truth. Here in his love. Not that we love God. He said, don't deceive yourself. Here in his love. That he first loved us. Amen. See, in other words, you've got to respond to his love first. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's exactly right. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go with me to Hosea, chapter 14. <clears throat> I ain't going to be too long. Hosea 14. But I did want to <clears throat> read a few scriptures. I want to read chapter 14. Love, huh? getting harder to believe. <laughs> I don't care what you say. It's just getting harder to believe. As, as, as God's judgment hand comes down, and it's, com it's down, it's coming, it just, it still gets hard to believe that God has is, is still got a, a place of love. But he, do, I, I mean, if he didn't, would, if he didn't, there would nobody make it into the kingdom from this generation. So, so somehow he's searching the earth. Amen. And he's saying, I will try to find a people 
that will believe my love and respond to it. If, though I'm going to destroy the earth, and though I'm going to pour my wrath out, though I'm going to judge the earth, and I'm going to judge my people, and I'm going to judge the church too, but yet still, there's going to be a people that responds to my love, that believes it. Why? Because if not, nobody's going to make it in the kingdom. Just ain't going to do it. Hosea chapter 14. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our God. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal them backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from them. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as a lily. And cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread. And his beauty shall be as the olive tree. And his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Verse 9. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. What things? Verse 4. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Verse 9 again. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. See, we, we don't believe God's ways are right. It's, it's not right for God to forgive you. <laughs> hey, come on, it's not right. In the human reason, I look back on the life I lived, it, no way it was right for God to forgive me. Amen. I did nothing but trash against God and evil and wickedness against the Lord. I mean, I didn't contribute anything good whatsoever. And from that day I have it. Because in my flesh was no good thing. And so it's just not right for God to be merciful to me and to be kind and gracious like he has. Viewing myself and viewing in my impurity and viewing God and his holiness and his, holiness, his purity and righteousness. All right? See, but there's one other thing that's in the picture, though. See, there is God here. Amen. And there's man here. But John was right and said, don't forget that there's one right in the middle. See, and he's the one that makes this equation balance. Hey, but you know in math you can do different things? You get in math, you get equations and they're unbalanced. You know what you do? You add something here and you do something there. And you can manipulate the equation and eventually you got it balanced out so it equals each other. That's exactly right. See, so here was an equation. We were sinful, wretched, naked, blind, ungodly. Here's God in his purity, holiness, righteousness, justice. Does not balance the equation. There's no way the two can be. And see, but into the equation comes God's expression of love. Herein is manifest the love of God that he sent Jesus Christ to be the propitiation. All right, and that is the difference that we constantly got to remember in our mind and we've got to contend for the faith once delivered to the saints that constantly Jesus is the surety. He's not one of the surety. He's not part of the surety. He is the surety. The surety of the new covenant is based only, solely, wholly, completely on Jesus Christ. See? And that's what we fail to see. see? And we've got to do that. There is one meeting between God and man Men, the man, Christ Jesus. And we got to see that. And we got to remember that. We got to believe that. We got to hold to that. He is the great high priest. Amen. He is the intercessor. Amen. He is the one that makes up the difference. He does balance the equation. 
I guarantee you that there's no way I could come and even pray, ever, 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 as long as I live in this body, unless every time I come, I got that balancing factor. And when every time I come, I acknowledge that balancing factor of the blood of Jesus. I do it. Every time I pray, I acknowledge, Lord, I'm coming because the equation is still unbalanced. Amen. It's still unbalanced in the extent that I'm still in this body. Amen. But he's balanced it, and God, who counts things the end from the beginning, he knows it. And by faith, he decrees it. It's done. He looks down and says, that equation's already balanced in my sight. Now, you've got to think like I think. You've got to see that I've already predestinated you. We just read that in Romans 8. I've already determined. I've already ordained you. I've already justified you. I've already, that's what it says in Romans 8. You remember reading that? He said, I already, and you've got to think like I think. You've got to say, yeah, I am predestinated. Yeah, I am justified. Yeah, I've been already ordained to this sin. Through Christ. Through Christ. And that balances the equation. Amen. See, God is a great mathematician. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. He named, he, he got every star numbered. Amen. He got a name for everyone. There's a lot of them up there. He can count the hairs on your head. He does all right. He's a great mathematician. Amen. Hey, this world is based on numbers. Amen. You look at how you get into, you know, and God designed it all. But you get into physics and chemistry and other things. Everything works by formulas. Some say, well, men made the formulas. Yeah, all they did is they just discovered principles God had laid down. That's all men did. But God made everything work a certain way. And he made it all be able to work in an orderly fashion and a manner. Amen. He's a great mathematician. He knows. I want to turn with me Songs chapter 2. Song of Solomon. Huh? Song of Solomon chapter 2. Thank God for his grace. said in the parable there was a man who found a field and in this field he found a pearl of great price so the man thought man I want to get the pearl I want to get the pearl I got to buy the field so what did the man do he sold all that he had he did what would Romans say he that gave his own son shall he not freely give us all things there God gave everything, everything that he had to buy the pearl. He wasn't interested in the field now. He's just after the pearl. See, we've got to remember that God's still interested in the pearl. He's he going he gonna to sell off the field, so to speak. I mean, he, you know, the field, he's going he gonna to trash it. Amen. He's going to redo it, bulldoze it, whatever he got to do, it, redo it. But he's going to get the pearl out first. That's all he's after is his pearl. We've got to remember that's what God's after. You know, it's just God and His faithfulness. Yeah. God is even faithful to the wicked. Amen. To warn the wicked. And the ungodly, God is faithful to do that. To warn even the wicked and ungodly. They won't hear. But still, He's faithful. He's faithful to do it. In Psalms chapter 2. I want to read this scripture. Verse 2 through 4. It says, I'll start with verse 1. Huh? I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. I want you to turn with me to songs chapter number 8. Do you believe that? Do you believe God's banner over you is love? I found a little thing. <clears throat> what do you call that thing? It's a banner. It's like that. Okay, yeah, it's a banner. Where was it at? It was at a, a thrift shop somewhere. Yeah, a thrift store. 
I found a banner. And it says, his banner over me is love. It had a little rainbow. And at the bottom it had Kurt. <laughs> you think I bought it? You better believe I bought it. <laughs> Did you find something like that with my name on it? I snatched it up. Boy. I don't know if it's worth 50 cents or not, but it was worth it to me. And I bought the thing. And I kind of bought it for Martha. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So she know that is the band. Amen. That's the cover. Amen. That's the place of rest. That's the shadow. She said, I sat down under his shadow with great delight. I guarantee you, you're not going to handle the light unless you really believe God really loves you. You're playing games in your head if you don't. You think you're going to be comfortable? Huh? If I didn't think God loved me, you think I'd even try to approach him? Forget it. I wouldn't even give it a try. Huh? But if I am persuaded, it's just like a child. You know what brings a child, even after they do something bad? You know what brings them? They still believe. In their heart, they still believe, Mama and Daddy love me. And yeah, they might discipline me. Yeah, but they love me. They're going to take me, and they're going to maybe discipline me, but I'm going to sleep in a nice, warm bed tonight. I'm going to get food. They're still going to take care of me. And that's what keeps a child coming on back to his parents, even at times when they don't want to. And, and notice how quickly they find a place of rest. Yeah. Notice how fast. Have you ever noticed how quick a, a child can be quieted? Do you hear what I said? Really, have you noticed sometimes how quickly a child can be quieted by their parents? I'm talking about fast. I'm talking about things that would take us two and three hours to quiet us. They'd still be going through our minds. They'd bother us when we went to bed. Amen. They'd try and work on us when we get up in the morning. But a child, sometimes we quiet it so quick. They, can, they, they, they find that place of rest. And that rest is actually in the love of their parents. They find it. And they're quieted by it. And they're comforted. And they're delighted in it. And we just really got to believe. You know, a lot of things are going to fail. Amen. A lot of things are going to fail. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. A lot of things going to fail. Amen. A lot of things going to fail. But there is something that never fails. Songs chapter 8. I want to read this scripture, verse 4 through 7. Now I'm going to read one more scripture and stop. Verse 4. I charge you, <clears throat> O daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raise thee up unto the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong, as death. <laughs> Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contempt. See, and that's the scripture that's talking about the pearl of great price. He sold everything. Why? Because the pearl's price was still greater than everything that could be given. And the Bible says many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown. There's a lot of things going to drown shortly because of tribulation. We know the Bible scripture likens it as unto a flood. Amen. And they had a little flood over in Atlanta again. And I guarantee you, you got a real flood. A real flood. It wipes out about everything in its past. Everything. But there is one thing that the Bible lets us know. That the waters cannot quench. And the floods cannot drown. And that's love. God's pure love. His true love. It's going to be right there in the midst of the water. 
it, it may not be like we think it is going to be. It may not be like we want it to be. But it's going to be like God revealed it to be. It's going to be the covenant type of love. It's going to be God saying, my mind is still on you. I, I still remember you. I have not forgotten you. I'm still there. You are going through this thing. You're going to experience this thing. But I still have you as the apple of mine eye. Amen. It's just like a child, a good parent lets a child do things. You know, they get a little older and he just lets them go through things. But, but you watch a good parent, boy. Man, they'll be peeking around the corner sometimes, watching how they're doing at it. You know, and if it gets too hard, they'll help them out. You, that's right. Amen. Or, or they'll let them endure it. Come on, ain't y'all ever did that? Come on, you parents. I ain't a parent, but I, I watch parents sometimes. You watch them to get a child a project, and they want them to learn, so they kind of want them to do it. Amen. So they just, they let them go, and the child struggles sometimes, gets there. But you watch sometimes the parents, they'll peek in. They're yeah, looking on him, huh? Anybody ever did that as a parent? Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, you, you, he was always on your mind. Amen. Right there. Amen. Amen. Even though it appeared like you just let him go and you wasn't helping him, wasn't going to do nothing for him. But you still, why? See, because it, it was based upon your covenant. That was your child. Amen. Amen. You were going to love him. Given God given responsibility to raise him, and you're going to fulfill it regardless. One last scripture. Jeremiah, I want to say. Jeremiah. But all I want to say is just, you know, we just, I mean, we, we must remember. I mean, I, if there's ever, I, I believe God's kidding. I believe God is angry. I believe that with all my heart. I believe God is, is raging. I believe the judgment of God is coming. Matter of fact, just I was praying the other day, we're going, diseases, you're going to see disease start filling this land like you've never seen it. I, I mean, we already know it's here. I mean, it's already happening. We, we know it's already been happening. Amen. I when you actually look at the, we just don't, the statistic of what's going on, what people are dying of today in the mouth, that are people dying of heart disease and cancer and this and that. I'm not, we're not talking about 10,000 or 5,000. We're talking about hundreds of thousands. We're talking about millions every year that are dying from things that we don't call diseases and pesticides. We don't use them words today, but they, that's exactly what they are. They're consumption. They're other things. And there's going to be more than come. Amen. And I believe the hard time. But still, in the midst of all that, I'm persuaded. I'm going to be persuaded. One thing, that tribulation is not going to separate me. Life is not going to separate me. Death is not going to separate me. Distress is not going to separate me. Persecution is not going to separate me. Nothing. I've made up my mind that I'm persuaded that nothing is going to separate me from the love of God because God said it. nothing would separate me from His love. It's based upon Him. Jeremiah 31. You know, Amen. When we base it on us, you can forget about it. You will fail. Your love will fail. Amen. Your, your long suffering will fail. Amen. Amen. My patience will fail. My kindness will fail. Amen. But God, His will never fail. Jeremiah 31, verse 1 says, 1 through 7. At the same time, saith the Lord. At the same time, saith the Lord. Will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, 
I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travails with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. And that's why God is still. That's why he's going to, that's why he's doing what he's doing in Israel and Jerusalem today. And that's why he's going to set his feet back on Jerusalem. Amen. And the Mount of Olives. He's going to come back there. And that's why he's going to open the eyes of the remnant in that land. Just like he opens the eyes of his people. Amen. Just like we sat in darkness. And when Jesus came, we saw a great light. They're sitting in darkness. And when he comes a second time, they're going to see a great light. And the Bible says, see, and that's why, one of the reasons why, you know, that they talk about the America being Israel and all the other nations Israel. That's all perversion. I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible says that God has blinded their eyes until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Now, if America is the true Israel, I'm talking about in the natural now. I'm talking about if they are the ten lost tribes, so to speak. Amen. If they are, then, and this has been a Christian nation, and many people throughout the centuries of this nation, decades, have believed in Christ Jesus, then a long time ago, the fullness of the Gentiles come in, are God's words alive. If Australia and England are Christian nations that are supposed to be the ten lost tribes, then their eyes have been opened and the fullness of the Gentile come in a long time ago, hundreds of years ago. And that's just not the truth. And that's why I know. See, them doctrines, they, they can do everything they want in the natural trace back anything they want. But there's things in the Word of God I'm not going to twist for them. See, and the Bible says not until. Amen. Not until the fullness of the Gentiles are come in. And we're just about having that fullness of the Gentile come in. And then God Almighty himself is going to open their eyes when Jesus comes. And that's why it just hasn't happened yet. Because there's just been too many believers in America in, in centuries past and in decades past. Amen. It was so much so that it was even called a Christian nation. See, and so then that means the fullness of Gentile had to come in a long time ago. You understand what I'm saying? It's simple. It's simple. But I just want to say, this is God's eternal love. Verse number three again. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And I want to say, that same love that God's shown to his people, it, I'm going to say in the natural, how he dealt with Israel. That same love is how he dealt with the church over and over and continually. And it's not based. He told him, he said, I'm not doing this for your sake. I'm doing this because I loved your fathers. I chose your fathers. And for us, we have one father. Amen. We have all become the children through Jesus Christ. And everything we have is because Christ is the surety of the covenant. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. When God looks down to bless us, when he looks down to have mercy upon us, when he looks down to our grace on us, it never never has nothing to do with what we have done. He always looks by the covenant that Jesus has set the balance equal, that he has made been the surety of the covenant, that he has made up the difference. It's always there. Now, we can grow in that love if we keep his commandments. We can abide in that love. We can know the depth of that love. We can know the breadth of it. We can know the length of it and the height of it. We can learn more of it. We can experience more of it as we respond, as we continue in it. Amen. Now, we've we got to do that. We must do that. Amen. That's our part. But I'm just saying how God's love is shed to us. Amen. It's based totally on his covenant and on his mind. And his ways just are not our ways. Amen. And that's all I want to say. It's somewhere in this time when everything's going to be quenched, everything's going to be burned up, everything's going to be shaken, everything's going to be overtaken, overwhelmed, flooded out. In this thing, there's one thing 
that many waters cannot quench. There's one thing that the floods cannot drown. There's one thing that never fails. Amen. And there's one thing we must be persuaded that we can never be separated from. Amen. And that is the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory.